Hey, this is Sasha. Welcome to another episode on Let's Talk Stocks. Today we're going to take a look at setting up an option calendar on Amazon. We're going to cover five main things, when to put on a calendar, how to set up a calendar, how a calendar makes you money, why the big stocks, and the profit potential on the Amazon calendar trade that I put on a few days ago. So let's get started on this trade. I just wanna show you, hey, here's a sample trade I put on just a few days ago for this lesson. I put it on uh, right before uh, the market dropped a little bit. I put on a calendar. I'll let you know why here in a little bit. Uh, but ultimately, uh, this trade right now is up profitably about $270 on a risk capital of $5,010. So you could do the math right there, uh, but I'll give it to you here in a little bit of breakdown once we get into uh, calculating some of these things. So let's take a look at when to put on a calendar trade. So part one, I'll let you know why I did this. So I was looking at the VIX, okay, looking at the VIX right here, VIX was started to spike, which means fear was going up, which means volatility was going up, which also means you know, you wanna be positive volatility. So here it was starting to spike and then I saw it drop back down. So that to me, overall this signal of the VIX starting to climb higher told me that right around this day, so this was just a few days ago, uh, basically Friday uh, to put on a kind of a calendar spread because things were going higher uh, and it was starting to break some uh, resistance levels. So I said, hey, this might be a good calendar spread if we have a major spike in the VIX. Why did I think we would have a major spike? Well, because I saw this right here and I thought it would at least just get to here. I didn't know or think it would get into the 20s, uh, but that's ultimately what happened and it actually worked out even better. So that's the, uh, the when to do it. You put it on when you think volatility is going to go up. Really, a calendar uh, really a diagonal could be an identical thing as an iron condor. It's just you're spreading the things out, the, the contracts with a little bit more time frame. How does it work? So how do you set one up? So if you look at a normal uh, trade, let's just use Tesla as an example here. If we look kind of at an iron condor or a vertical, okay, you would normally do it in the same month, right? You would sell one here, buy one maybe here. Now with the calendar, we do the exact same thing, except we do the protection further out in the next month. So that's what we basically do. So we go ahead and we'll sell one at, let's say, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do one at uh, 190. Okay, so we sell one, uh, a single. This is gonna be a diagonal example real quick, but you'll get the idea because I'm gonna move it into a calendar in a way. So here's my Tesla, I sold one. Now, normally you get the protection a little bit further out. I'm doing this with a vertical just so uh, the newbies, people just starting out, I'm buying one, newbies can understand. And now there's your vertical. Now, how do you turn it into a calendar? Well, what happens is, is on the calendar, you go a further month out. You buy your protection later. And now you got yourself a diagonal. Now diagonal is similar to a calendar, except it's at the same strike. So now we take the 170, we move that to the 190, and now you got a calendar. Now the problem is, is now the price has to go down because I went out of the money. So how do you get it in the money? Well, you do it at the same strike price. So here it would be kind of 250, okay? Because Tesla's around 250, so I would go 250. Here I go 250, boom, we're at the same uh, right there. Now, if I wanted to just put it in as one trade, I could have really just done this and just gone to about a 250 calls or puts, doesn't really matter. Um, it just depends which one's in the money, out of the money. So you'll get the same thing here, except I just have to switch the one that I'm buying to August. So there we go. I got it right there. And I did calls on this time because I'm out of the money. It's a little bit there. If I was to go maybe, uh, let's say I wanted this a little bit lower because I expected a pullback, because that's kind of what I did on my Amazon trade, then I'd probably go with the puts because now I'm out of the money in the puts. So here's kind of your trade setup right there. So how much do you make or uh, what's the next step? Basically, that's how you set it up. So how does it make money? Well, when you look at these contracts, you're selling one and you're buying one. Let's uh, reduce this to five contracts here. So what's happening here? Well, I could do July, I could do August. So here I went June and August, I could do July. What's happening here is that 
the calendar trade is expiring. All these contracts, they expire, right? But the one that expires the fastest is closer to expiration. So here's our calls, here's our puts. We're focused on the calls or the puts, it doesn't matter, but the ones that are in the near month, right? So you can see right here, this is the days till expiration. The ones that are closest expire faster. So let's say they all have a certain decay. The ones two days of, uh, left or remaining till expiration have the fastest decay. The nine days is very, very fast, but it's not as fast as the two day. 16 days still decaying super quick. So basically this uh, decay curve looks something like this where this up here could be more, uh, you know, the 60 day mark. So you can see the closer you get, the faster that ramps down. So the 44 days decay quicker than the 72 days or than the 100 days. So we sell the one at 44 days, so it expires faster. We buy one at 72 days for protection. It decays kind of slower. So this one decays really quick. Um, and we profit on the difference, the difference on the speed of that decay. So that's why when we look at this contract, we get $3.51 of decay every single day if the stock does not move and volatility stays equal. So basically, if I move the time forward, you can see every day it kind of goes up. For now it's $4.31. Then it'll go to four seventy one, five dollars, six dollars a day. You make eight dollars a day, ten dollars a day, and you can see the white line, which is today, uh, gets closer to the green line, which is at expiration of uh, my uh, my uh, short term options. There, uh, then all of a sudden, as it gets closer, you're making more and more money. Now, eventually, that turns into its own spread because. When one expires, you've made the most money, so you have to close this trade out. Otherwise, now you start losing money, right? So what's the most that you can kind of make? Well, the most that you can kind of make is at this peak. Usually we never get there, but let's say you make about $800 on $487 worth of risk. That's quite a lot. Typically, it's not gonna happen. You might hold this for, let's say, I don't know, a couple of days, a couple of weeks. So if, if you're doing it, 44 days out, you might hold it for 20 days. If you're doing it 10 days out, you might hold it for four days or five days. So here, if you hold it for about, uh, here's a handful of days. Uh, so we're now on uh, the ninth or so. So about a month, if you hold it for about a month, you get about 130 days on $487 of capital. So it gives you about a 20, 25% uh, rate of return. So that's how you make money. Why the big stocks? Well, the big stocks here have option premium, right? The bid and the ask here, they have 14.7 on the juicy premium. If you look at Amazon here, look at this, a $65. If you look at Apple, even this one has some premium, $6. If you look at Facebook, has $4 of premium. If you look at something like GE, well, you got 44 cents. The difference between this one and that one, 44 and 56, you're gonna make 10 bucks. So it's not really, that's why you're doing more of the juicier $100 plus stocks. $70 stocks also usually work out fine, but you know, uh, the more expensive, the more popular stocks usually will be just fine. That's why you do the big stocks. Going into point number five, profit potential on my Amazon trade. So here's what's happening and give you an idea. And this is just a few days into it. Um, and you know when I put that on. So here, actually, it's spiking up a little bit. So we got about $320 of uh, profit. Remember, this one's decaying about $30 a day. So since I was talking, we went up about 20, 20, 30 bucks. This is also in part of the Vega because I'm positive Vega, which means when the market sells off, I profit even more. That's why I did uh, calendar trade. So to give you an example here at three, call it three, uh, 320 uh, dollars is what I'm making. 320 divided by 5,010 dollars, we get about 6% return on investment. So that's kind of what you're looking to make. Um, if I can hold it a little bit longer, let's say you make about 550 dollars, uh, but that means you're holding it for a couple weeks, a little bit longer, you know, and of course you're still using the same amount of capital there. 
Uh, right now, it's working out well simply because if you look at the S&P, you know, we're selling off a little bit the last few days. So volatility has been spiking. As you saw here on the VIX, we had this increase. Right now, it's pulling back a little bit. It's a little bit in the 20, so a little bit high. So it's to be expected. But even then, the S&P is only up five points, which is not that um, amazing. So if you look at the S&P, you know, we're kind of rolling over. So it's to be expected to have a little bounce and maybe even a pullback. Now, position-wise, I would say I'm still fairly healthy in this because I got room for this to go down even till about uh, about 1875 and that profit picture will still look good so even if we pull back a little bit further hey I'm good if we stay here and hang out I'm good so I can just milk it until you know until it starts looking weak or moving against me and then I could get out of the position so that's how you deal with a calendar trade that's how you make it work um, and uh, that's how you stay profitable basically you set it up when you expect volatility to go um, up uh, and that's usually when your when your VIX is kind of low so when you have the VIX and it's at a lower point and lower level uh, you expect it to go up that's a good time to set up calendar spreads uh, uh, you do it and you make money because your short-term options expire faster than your long-term options you want to trade the bigger stocks because bigger stocks have juicier premium and your profit potential in a handful of days could be, not saying it always will be, could be about three to five to seven percent, depending on how things work in your favor. Now, if they don't work in your favor, of course, if this was moving, you know, far to the upside, I could be down two hundred and fifty dollars. If it was moving further down, um, I could it, it could help me with the volatility, but again, it could be down two three hundred dollars as well on here. So things could look completely different. But anyways, that's how you set up the trade. That's how you make it work. And that's how you do 5% on an Amazon position. All right, so thank you so much for joining me in this episode. And if you have specific questions, feel free to reach out at tradersfly.com or check out some of the memberships that we have regarding option trading that'll be coming out soon. All right, thanks again, and I'll see you next time.